Nearly a decade ago when Subaru and Toyota teamed up to build a lightweight, performance-oriented rear-wheel drive six-speed manual sport coupe, enthusiasts went crazy, the tuner world went berserk, and honestly, Subaru and Toyota sold as many as they could for the first nine years of production for the first generation. Now, of course, last year when Subaru finally unveiled an all-new second generation, I was pretty pleased because in a world full of crossovers and electrified vehicles, this was just a refreshing change, especially for enthusiasts looking for their very first sports car. Now, of course, I've already had a chance to drive the new BRZ out on a track and at a brief first drive out in Connecticut. However, this week, the company has loaned me a 2022 Subaru BRZ Limited, of course, with the six-speed manual transmission. So, of course, in this video, we're going to drive the BRZ for a week. We're going to live with it. We're going to test out the efficiency, test out the practicality. And at the end of this review, we're going to find out, has Subaru made enough changes to the second-generation BRZ to keep enthusiasts coming back? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we talk about the exterior styling changes, I wanna first remind you guys that Subaru replaced the old two liter boxer flat four with a larger 2.4 liter engine. So we did get more power, even though we didn't get the turbo that some of you enthusiasts were hoping for. Now you can see the engine bay looks pretty similar, of course, to the previous generation, although I'm noticing the plastic intake runners. Uh, but again, this is a Toyota and Subaru jointly developed powertrain, mostly Subaru powertrain. It's the 2.4 liter FA naturally aspirated flat four. It still revs out to like 7,400 RPM. Toyota basically added their D4S direct and port fuel injection system. It makes 228 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. So those are a pretty healthy, around 20 to 30% increase in the horsepower and the torque figures. You can still take your pick between a six-speed manual, which my tester has with a limited slip differential, or a six-speed conventional torque converter stepped automatic transmission. Rear-wheel drive, of course, is your only uh, drivetrain option. Uh, remember, this is a lightweight sports car. This is the only Subaru that doesn't have all-wheel drive as standard. Fuel economy for this manual transmission model is rated at 20 in the city, 27 on the highway. The automatic gets better because it does 21, 30. Premium gas, of course, is required. And as this car sits, it weighs in at around 2,800 pounds. So this is not really that much heavier versus the previous generation. Now, closing the lightweight hood, let's talk a little bit about the styling changes for 2022. Now, first of all, this is an all new generation, but Subaru actually still reuses the same platform by making a few tweaks to it. When we, when we drive this car, I'll talk about how it still feels very familiar. It almost feels like a very heavy refresh, but Subaru again considers this an all new generation. Now looking at the front fascia, you can see it has a very Porsche-like look to it, almost Porsche Cayman uh, look to it with the front fascia, especially with these new headlights. All of them come standard with full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and turn signals. This limited model has steering adaptive uh, LED headlights. You can see some of the vents over here are functional. The front grille definitely looks a little bit more you know, aggressive this year, although I still prefer the look of the Toyota GR86 now. Before, I used to prefer the Subaru. Now, I think the Toyota actually looks better. Looking at the rest of the side profile, you can see Subaru didn't make this vehicle any larger. It's around 168 inches long. Overall, the wheelbase is still the same. Remember, it's still the same platform. You have roughly five inches of ground clearance with this vehicle. You can see the limited uh, tester that, I'm have, that I have here has these larger 18 inch gray finished wheels with the multiple spokes. They're wrapped in 215-40 R18 tires. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. It is about 45 degrees out here, so we'll be testing this out on these colder conditions. We're not gonna get the best zero to 60 times later when we hook this up to our testing equipment. Now looking at the rest of the profile, again, sleek looking design. I really love how it's very Porsche, uh, very low uh, wide. It has those classic rear wheel drive proportions. Uh, sadly, Subaru does not offer a sunroof. I was hoping they would eventually offer one. Uh, no a carbon fiber or black painted roof either. That's something that they may, they could add later on when they decide to do like an STI or a TS version of this car. Uh, looking at the rear, you can see the Rear taillights have been redesigned uh, with a full LED design, which is definitely nice. You have this black bar that kind of connects the two taillight modules together. And then down here, the exhaust also uh, looks pretty much the same. Your reverse lights are back there in the lower part of the bumper. But again, I still kind of prefer the look of the GR86. So let me know in the comments below if you guys prefer the Subaru or the Toyota. Uh, opening up the trunk, the trunk capacity remains about the same. You get 6.6 .6 cubic feet of space. The opening hasn't really changed. The seats still fold down. Uh, flat, which is nice. It's not a 60-40 fold, however, and those back seats are really just used for putting extra stuff. Lifting this up here, you can see uh, there is no spare tire, uh, just a fix-a-flat kit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you guys uh, were hoping that Subaru would add a spare tire in this vehicle. 
So the exterior of the new BRZ looks a little bit more Porsche-like. It's definitely very sleek, but what about the interior? First of all, let me show you guys the key fob. Here's the current Subaru key fob. All the BRZs now come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start. The previous generation, if you bought a premium, I believe you had just a traditional key fob without the smart entry, but I'm glad to see Subaru has upped the standard equipment list. Now opening up the door, you can see this limited model has the very nicely appointed interior with the uh, black Alcantara, the black leather, and the red accents and the red stitching. It definitely makes the interior look a lot more upscale. The seats, Subaru says, have been redesigned. They offer uh, pretty nice bolstering um, for the cornering, of course, and the steering wheel you can see has the red stitching uh, and it's a newer steering wheel design. The door panel, you can see uh, you have the suede Alcantara on this upper portion, which feels nice. However, I imagine if this gets wet, if you guys have the window down, that's probably going to cause uh, mold issues. So I probably would keep that in mind. It's hard touch plastic over here, soft padded over here where you'd keep your, or where you'd rest your elbow. Nice grab handle here. And then the window controls feel pretty high quality. It's, Subaru gives you automatic windows for up uh, for both the front and you have a chrome accented door handle. Now getting inside with five inches of ground clearance, oh gosh, I'm getting too old for this. You do have to kind of fall into this vehicle, uh, which can be a problem. But once you're in here and you settle in, you can see the interior definitely has been redesigned with upgraded tech. As I come in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. It's also a relatively heavy door. And then you can see here, um, all the BRZs now come with a larger eight inch touchscreen, which has the Subaru Starlink system. Now starting the vehicle up, you can see the button is right here where you'd expect it to be. It's not even really blocked by the steering wheel, um, which is nice. My manual transmission model, make sure it's in neutral, of course. And then of course you have an all digital display here for the instrument panel. Although I have to say the graphics of this digital display look a little bit cheesy. They look like they're from like 2015. So um, it's a digital display, but I kind of expected it to look a little bit more upscale, especially considering uh, this is a 2022 model, but it is at least an upgrade from the previous generation. Now, looking at the in interior materials, you can see um, this is a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. You have some silver painted plastic trim. This this is hard touch over here, but you can see the Alcantara is kind of uh, accented here over the instrument panel hood, although I'd have, I would have liked to see some stitching here. The steering wheel is a manual tilt and telescoping, which offers a okay amount of adjustability. I wish it came out a little bit more. I also don't like how it cheaply falls when you release it, so it kind of reminds you that you're, dri you're driving in an inexpensive car. Um, the steering wheel controls, however, are a nice addition. I remember the first generation when it first came out, it didn't have steering wheel controls, so that's something to keep in mind. This right here controls the secondary screen, or I'm sorry, it's this one over here uh, on the right side, controls the secondary screen where you can go into some settings, you can adjust the uh, trip computer, you can show a performance page where it shows the power curve, it shows a G meter, which is all pretty nice. Uh, and then your audio information, and you can turn off things like the blind spot monitoring, the rear cross traffic alerts, steering responsive headlights. Uh, that's all, of course, uh, a new addition for this new generation, which is nice. Um, so this screen looks pretty good. If you push the track button here, you can see it changes the tack. Or you have to push and hold it. It changes the tack to look more like a race car style. That looks pretty nice, but it does turn off the traction control and puts the stability control in a more or less restrictive setting. So make sure you keep that in mind if you guys are driving this out on public roads like that. Uh, over here, you can see the eight inch touchscreen looks a lot better, but this is not their latest version with the larger 11.9 or 11.6 inch display that we get in the new WRX, but at least it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's not wireless. However, Subaru still doesn't do a wireless connection CarPlay, which would be nice. Pushing the home screen here, you can see um, there's no embedded GPS. It's not really needed when you have CarPlay, but this is all fairly easy to use. When I put the vehicle in traverse, you can see there's the backup camera, which uh, has distance markers, and it also has trajectory, no parking sensors. Didn't really expect that in a vehicle like this. Uh, so this is all perfectly fine. I do like the volume knob and the tuning knob. That's all really nice, but the screen itself could look a little bit more high tech. The graphics look a little bit dated. Uh, you can see down here, there's dual zone climate control, which is nice. That's included with the limited trim. The manual transmission has really nice short throws. Uh, it's got a relatively light clutch. It's a pretty easy car to drive. Reverse is accessed by pulling up on this and then going into reverse there. Love the manual cable style parking brake. This is gonna be really important for enthusiasts. And then over here, you can see there's your track mode there. If you push and hold that, it'll go into track. And if you continuously push and hold it, it'll actually turn off the stability control entirely. But that's something, again, I wouldn't recommend for uh, out on the road. Over here, you can see hard touch plastic, which is what I expected. There's a new center console cubby with covered storage here for this new generation, which is nice. Uh, it's also slightly padded over here. The seats, like I said earlier, are comfortable and supportive. They look great and they hold you in really nicely. The glove box, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped. 
uh, but not lined with felt. It's very deep, so it's a good amount of storage over there. Um, your LED, or the interior lighting here and here is not LED. You don't have an auto dimming roof view mirror, so that's something to keep in mind. No heads up display either. Wasn't really expecting that. And then the back seats back here, you can see Subaru says there's 29 inches of legroom back here, but my question is, is where? Literally, that's where I have the seat to drive. There's so little space back here. It only seats two. Those back seats are mostly gonna be folded down or you're gonna use it for stuff because uh, it's not really usable for people, but at least it has a back seat, unlike the Mazda Miata. So overall, the interior, very small, has upgraded tech in it, decent materials, uh, and you have a really good visibility, and you can also get Subaru's EyeSight Driver Assist if you go for the automatic transmission model, but it's certainly not luxurious. It's not the most refined either, but it is a very simplistic sports car that has mostly everything that uh, modern buyers or younger buyers are looking for. So in the world we live in full of electrification and SUVs, it is just so damn refreshing to be driving a brand new rear wheel drive, lightweight, six speed manual sport coupe. So I have to give Subaru and Toyota a round of applause for doing a second generation, even though this is a very, very heavy refresh in my eyes because it still basically feels like the same car, but just slightly more modern, slightly more elevated, not really more refined, but in a car like this, you're not looking for refinement, but we do, what we do get is more power. And that's what a lot of enthusiasts were complaining about. We wanted Subaru to go turbo, they didn't go turbo, but the fact that we got a bigger engine here with more uh, horsepower, more torque, that's pretty, pretty, uh, reason for celebration for me. Now let's go ahead and see what I can do zero to 60 wise. It is a little damp out here, so we'll see what the best I can do is. <laughs> and with all that wheel spin, I got 6.78 seconds there. So gonna have to retry that with a little bit of a less aggressive launch. Um, that actually wasn't even aggressive at all, but the road, as you can see, is wet. I had the vehicle in track mode uh, and uh, the limited slip diff was trying to do its best. The stability control was turned off or the traction control was turned off. Technically, it still isn't completely fully defeatable in, in uh, track mode. It's still technically on slightly, uh, but that was a pretty bad wheel <laughs> spin. But I mean, uh, this is a, a really fun car and it's an easy car to drive. That's the thing about this car is even though the roads are slightly damp, I don't fear for my life because it doesn't have an overwhelming amount of power that's going to like basically kill me. Uh, like if I was driving like a Corvette or something like that, it might be a little bit more scary, but let's go ahead and try another launch here. I'm gonna be a little more light on the throttle here. Spinning into second. All right, 6.6 .6 seconds there. So I think this car on a, on a perfect launch on a drier road, we could probably do a six and a half second launch or zero to 60 time for this car, which it is quicker than the old model, but not that much quicker. Where it feels quicker, however, is when you're just driving this car normally. Um, it has so much more torque, so much more low end torque, like 30, 33 pound feet more low end torque. So anytime I'm in a higher gear, just put my foot down here and it definitely feels like it's gonna accelerate a lot better. The engine itself also feels smoother. It revs to 7,400 RPM, and it sounds damn good when you're doing that. Listen to this. When you hit the limiter, it definitely cuts the power, so you have to listen for that buzzer, which you can turn on and off, and the rev indicator. But man, you just wanna rev out this engine as much as you can, because it's just so incredibly fun to do so. In a world full of all these electric cars, this is so refreshing, like I said earlier. It just feels like such a fun car. It feels so light, it feels so tossable. I mean, it's curb weight of like 30 or 2,800 pounds makes this super lightweight. And I literally almost ran over a squirrel there. Um, <laughs> but it's just so much fun to do so. And you also get this kind of planted feel, the low center of gravity from the boxer engine, the steering that's super responsive and sharp. I mean, I drove this vehicle out on a track at Lime Rock Park with Subaru and I was just blown away with how fun this car is to drive. <laughs> and the back end just steps out so easily too, whenever you want it to. <laughs> oh my God, this is so much fun. I, I love this car. I mean, if you're looking for your very first sports car, something to go autocrossing with or take it to the track, this and the Toyota G86, my two favorite vehicles, the GR86, I'm sorry. The one thing about this car, the six-speed manual, I like the throws on it. I like the fact that you can feel the engine vibrating back through the shifter. It has a limited slip diff. 
but I am noticing like if you want to go down into first gear, it's a little difficult to get down into first gear. So I'll show you guys that when I come over here to this stop sign right here. So obviously as you come back into, or you're coming down to a stop, if you want to go to first, there's a little bit of resistance. It actually prefers that you come to a complete stop before it gives you an easier slide into first gear. <laughs> Literally the back just wants to get sideways every time traction control is still blinking because the road is a little wet out here. <laughs> Listen to that engine. God, you can't, you have to, how could you not smile with this car? It's just so much fun to drive. Even though electric cars are faster, even though I've driven way more powerful sports cars, this and the Miata and the GR86 are just still such a joy to drive. They remind you why driving is important, why you want lightweight sports cars, why you want rear wheel drive, why you want a manual transmission. I mean, yes, this car is not the most refined. The ride quality is actually not too bad, but it's just noisy in here. There's a lot of road noise, a lot of engine noise, a lot of tire noise, um, not really much in terms of wind noise. The seats, however, are pretty comfortable. I do like these upgraded seats, especially with the Alcantara and the suede. It's definitely a nice feeling. The visibility is also good. Um, Subaru did add a couple of driver assistance tech features. If you guys go for the uh, automatic transmission model, you can now get their EyeSight driver assist tech. But I actually haven't had a chance to drive the automatic version of this car, and I probably would want to skip it. Uh, I did drive the GR86 with an automatic, and it was to be expected, not wonderful, but it was still fun. Out on the track, however, uh, the automatic did a pretty decent job, but out on the road, you definitely feel the slower, the slower feel of the automatic, just the fact that it's an automatic with stepped gears or with a, a torque converter. I, the one thing I wish that Subaru and Toyota added was active rev matching. I mean, I know I can heel toe, uh, or at least you purists out there probably wanna just heel toe on your own, but I would just like it to do it for me, especially when you're out on a track. Just, <laughs> this thing just lives for high RPM. It's so great. And that, that dip and the torque curve from the old two liter is gone. With this 2.4, Subaru fixed that. Uh, so it just wants to keep revving. This is basically as good as back when Honda replaced the two liter with the 2.4 liter in the Civic Si about 10 years ago. Uh, the, the 2012 Civic Si was so terrible in terms of the, uh, the car, the interior, but the engine was such an improvement that I really loved. Uh, it just made the car better and easier to daily drive. Now, the one thing I don't like is Subaru added this return to center feel for the turn signal stock. I don't know why they did that. Uh, it reminds me of an older BMW. I just don't think it was necessary. <clears throat> but I just want to feel like, I just want to rev it out one more time here. We're not going to do a zero to 60. I just want to rev it out. Still spitting out the rear. <laughs> But anyways, in terms of fuel economy, I did average about 23 MPG in my week's worth of testing. On the highway, it got around 26 MPG. So the automatic is technically more efficient, but it's not as fun. Uh, so overall, it's easy to drive, it's fun to drive, it gets decent economy, it's reasonably practical as far as sport coupes go. And basically it has everything that you love about the previous generation, just elevated a little bit more. Not super refined, but definitely a lot better to drive and just more fun and quicker. So Subaru did a great job with this next generation. It's not gonna alienate you for those of you who are coming from the old one, but it's also not too modern to where it starts to feel like a computerized car. It still feels very analog. It still feels very mechanical. And that's the whole point of the BRZ and the GR86. So after spending a full week with the completely redesigned Subaru BRZ Limited, I am pretty happy to say that if you guys are looking for your very first sports car, an affordable rear wheel drive lightweight sport coupe, this and the Toyota should still be at the very top of your list because it still has all the same qualities that we loved about the first generation BRZ. It's really easy to drive, it's relatively efficient, relatively practical by sport coupe standards, and just a ton of fun to drive. I mean, this out on a track or even out on the road, it has just enough power that you can use it and have fun with it without completely breaking the law or feeling like you're, feeling like you're gonna kill yourself, especially if you're out driving on damper conditions. Really, my only issue with the BRZ probably comes down to the fact that Subaru doesn't offer a couple of features that would, I would have liked to see, like a sunroof, uh, maybe even a heads-up display, something again, or a premium sound system. That would have, again, elevated the car a little bit more, but that's not the point of this vehicle. The point is, is to give you a lightweight, rear-wheel drive, fun-to-drive sports coupe and not have to break the bank because this car starts at just under $28,000 for the base premium version. The premium honestly comes with most of the features that you'd want. However, I don't like the 17-inch silver wheels that you get on the premium. That, that's 
that's an easy change with the aftermarket. If you guys go for the limited, it's about $3,000 more to get the leather and suede Alcantara, the heated seats, the 18 inch wheels, the summer performance tires. Um, this model here that I'm showing you with the, the Sapphire blue exterior stickers for just over $31,500. So $31,500 is actually a pretty good deal considering the average new car trans transaction price as of this filming in March, 2022 is probably around $46,000, which is just crazy. That has to do with inflation. But again, you are getting something that is so fun to drive and it also puts it right in the price realm of the current generation Mazda Miata. Although the Mazda is more expensive when you option it up at the higher end because remember, Subaru kind of keeps things simple with this vehicle and it makes it a really impressive daily driver and also just a really great first track toy, especially if you guys are looking to uh, get out there and start doing some autocross uh, courses or some track courses on your local area. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Subaru BRZ Limited. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.